Hello everyone and welcome to today's edition of Water Drops. Today we're going to be talking about audit reporting to meet drainage requirements. This workflow really is for anybody working on a drainage design project because for the most part people are submitting these drainage designs to a regulatory authority that has certain standards that need to be met in order for your project to go to construction. Anytime you're going in and disrupting the natural drainage patterns of a site, you're going to need to prove to your local stormwater regulation that you're not essentially making things worse than how they were previously. And so these regulations take the form of velocity requirements in your storm drains, or they might take the form of runoff reduction requirements. But typically in any stormwater jurisdictions, design criteria or manual or handbook, there's going to be a list of requirements that your stormwater design is going to need to meet. And if you don't meet those requirements, then your stormwater control agency might ask you to resubmit your drainage report, which is of course not ideal. And that's why this audit reporting tool that we'll go over today in Info Drainage is so important and can really save some time because you can customize these audit reports to make sure that you're hitting those requirements every single time and during all phases of your design process. Additionally, you can customize and save these audit reports so that you have a specific audit that you perform based on the certain jurisdiction that you're working in. And so this might save any confusion you might be having juggling those different stormwater control regulations in your brain and instead just have an auto report that's going to tell you for this jurisdiction, here's exactly what your drainage design is supposed to be doing and here's exactly what it is doing. These audit reports can be shared across your organization so that every member of your team is meeting the same criteria and therefore creating more consistent, more reliable, and more repeatable drainage design procedures. And so the workflow that we'll cover today is first we'll just run a hydraulic analysis on a drainage design within Info Drainage, and then we'll perform an audit report. We'll save this audit report to be shared across the workplace, to be shared with our teammates. We'll address the issues where the requirements are not being met, and then we'll also view and publish these results. So here we have an example of an info drainage model that represents just a standard commercial site. So we have some catchment areas, we have a pipe network, and we have our little stormwater control arch chamber down here at the downstream end. The first thing we'll do is just run this analysis so that we can compare against some of, the, some of those results, and then we will look at the audit report. So once that's run, you'll find the audit report under the results tab. Um, if you don't run the analysis first, you'll still be able to access it. You can still audit against design inputs, so you don't technically need to run the analysis before. Uh, but in this situation, we are going to look at some of the results. So let's open the audit report tool. So here we can see the different phases that we want to conduct the audit report on. I have in here just this kind of post conditions proposed phase. It's not sized currently. I do also have some uh, an existing phase and a sort of an alternatives analysis phase in here, but we're just going to perform this audit on this phase. And then you can see here the list of the various audits that you can perform. So uh, you could perform an inflow summary audit. Uh, you could perform an outfall details audit. Here in the pipe diameter option, we can see there's a variety of different ways that we can define these reports and specify how we want it to report back uh, the, the results or the inputs that are in our current drawing. Uh, we could check for things like backdrops and so on and so forth. Not going to investigate each one of these. Um, our help file is posted online. And so if you go there and look at the audit reporting tool, it'll step you through each of these different audits and basically what exactly the program is looking at when you do perform, when you do select and set up one of these different criteria. So what we're instead going to do is open a pre-existing audit report file. 
So here you can see this .idarx file that is the info drainage audit report file. Uh, and so this is something that's pre-made. It's already using some of those key requirements that the city of Greenville, Greenville has. And so we can just load this and run it, make sure that for a drainage report that we're going to submit to the city of Greenville, it's going to pass based on these criteria. And so this is just saved um, on my personal drive right now, but this can be saved anywhere. It doesn't have to be saved with your info drainage file. I could put this on the cloud, for example, share it across my organization so that we don't have to redo this analysis or redo this audit every time that we're submitting to the city of Greenville. And you could have multiple of these files for each of your different stormwater jurisdictions. So you're creating more repeatable and more consistent drainage designs. So I'll open this file and we can see that a few of these different audits have been populated. Uh, cover depth, so it's going to check that our pipes are within one and 10 feet of depth. Uh, pull, pipe full bore velocity as well. It's going to make sure that our pipe velocities are between two and a half and 15 feet per second. And this flood warning audit, uh, when there's not a criteria option here or a range option, basically this is just kind of more of a true false yes no type of audit. So it's just going to report back where there are flood warnings. So let's go ahead and perform this audit and take a look at our results. And so it comes out kind of in this report format. You can customize these headings. You can put your own company's logo here, print it off, send it to whomever you might need to. Um, but let's actually look at what, what this audit is telling us. So starting with cover depth, uh, here we can see the audit details. So again, it's looking for cover depths between one and 10 feet. However, the following items have failed the audit. And so we can see that this standard pipe 15 is causing us some issues. Uh, it looks like it is, if we look at the cover elevation and the invert elevation, uh, you can see that that's 0.8 feet, so it's less than this minimum one feet. So we have kind of a shallow pipe here. Um, additionally, this pipe full bore velocity is not meeting the defined criteria at standard pipe 18. We can see that this full bore velocity is zero, which is, of course, less than two and a half feet per second. So we'll need to take a look at that as well. And here we can see where we're getting some flood risk warnings at these manholes. Uh, you can see which storm event is causing those flood warnings. So this is kind of perhaps predictable. We can see that the 100 year event is causing us some issues um, in these manholes and in our stormwater control structure here. So now we could close this out and we could go back uh, and look at standard pipe 15 if we wanted to just track that down and make those changes. Um, another really handy way to address the changes in the audit report are, is in this review failures option. Um, so if I click on review failures, it shows me exactly where those failures are. So let's do this cover depth one. This one should be relatively easy to address. And so you can see that I just clicked on this cover depth option here and it opened this connections table. So it took me directly to that standard pipe 15, which needs to be corrected. Um, this needs to be at least a foot deep. You could see it's 0.8 feet deep. So if I just go ahead and lower this, um, I'll adjust this downstream elevation accordingly to, it did automatically bump it down for me based on some network design criteria that I have going on in the background. Uh, but here I'll just press okay. And so now that we've edited some of the geometry of the network, so I can press this review failures and it's going to get rid of my, not only that cover depth option that we just fixed, but you might notice it also got rid of the pipe full bore velocity, which we hadn't really addressed yet, but that's just because we've created or we've edited the geometry of the network and so it needs to be rerun. You can see that kind of audit report went away here. Um, so if I perform that audit again, it's gonna tell me I need to run the analysis based on our new geometry. So we can just do that really quick. And so now we can see our cover depth issue has been addressed, but again, that 
uh, pipe full bore velocity is still zero. So uh, we can kind of review that failure, that failure from here too. And we notice the first thing that pops out to me is that the slope of this value is, uh, of this pipe is zero, which is why there is a zero velocity flow in this pipe as well. So you can see our upstream invert elevation is the same as our downstream invert elevation. So I'll just go ahead and raise this upstream elevation a little bit here. Press OK. Uh, and then we will need to rerun the analysis again. And let's see how that goes for us. And so now we see those green check marks. We can see that all items are passing and we are still reporting some flood risk. So we would need to take a look back at that, uh, but we can certainly do so. And if I needed to add any additional requirements to the city of Greenville audit report, um, let's say for example, I wanted to add some sort of pipe diameter requirement. Um, just don't want any pipes less than, um, let's say six inches in diameter, we can do that. And then we can just save this audit report. Uh, we can save over that city of Greenville one or just create a new audit report file, but that's essentially how you generate these predefined audit report files. And so that concludes this water drops workflow presentation on audit reporting. We covered how the audit reporting tool can help ensure that your drainage designs are going to hit those requirements every time and at different phases in your design process. We demonstrated how those audit reports can be shared across your teams and how essentially by just having these more repeatable, more consistent uh, checks on your drainage designs, you are, reducing the re you are reducing the risk of needing to resubmit a drainage design process. Thank you so much and I hope you enjoyed this session.